Hey, welcome back. So in this tutorial, we're going to um, use the spline system to add in a road, and we're also going to create a fence, okay? And um, if you're just now joining me, this is the first time you've uh, caught one of my tutorials. You can catch up on this landscape series by going to putting on the Fritz 3D visualization and uh, checking out some of the past tutorials and also uh, maybe checking out some of the other tutorials I have on other things like making video games and Unreal Engine, um, some Maya modeling and animation stuff and uh, get kind of caught up. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're actually going to do this week. All right, so here in this uh, example, you'll see that uh, there's this uh, long two lane paved road. It's kind of uh, chewed up a little bit. And then we also have a chain link fence that runs off in the distance that direction. Now these are not uh, models that have been laid down next to each other over and over again by me. These are actually using the spline system that are right here. So here's the fence and then here's the road. And you see I can, actually I don't think I can turn it on and off in this method, but that's okay. So if I raise up a little bit, you can see it. And off in the distance, it looks like it kind of disappears into the ground, but as we move along it, you'll see that it's actually there, it comes back. And then the chain link fence is kind of the same thing. You see that it goes off in the distance. I ended it right over there, but uh, yeah, so. All right, um, so let's go ahead and uh, go to the project one that we're gonna do. Let me go ahead and save this real quick and open up my project. I'm gonna to go to um, open my level and I'm gonna to go to the Aspen demo that we've been working on. All right, so here it is. Um, and you can see that uh, I've done a little bit of prep work. I've put this model in, it's a bridge, similar uh, texture on this road here that you saw in the uh, demonstration just a second ago and um, I kind of done a little prep work is raising the some of the ground here to meet the bridge as well as over here now this bridge is a model that I built in Maya just recently uh, I thought it would be kind of cool to have the road go over the river which in this case I'm using a spline system in my uh, landscape here for this actual uh, water instead of the water plug-in all right um, Last tutorial, we got into painting in our uh, trees and doing procedural grass. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this road kind of out this direction. Um, and I'm gonna come from that direction over there. So um, a couple little bit of uh, prep work that we need to do to get this uh, ready for the road is, um, I probably should have pointed it out in the last, uh, in the other level, but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint uh, sort of my path material along the area where I want my road to go. And that's going to remove this uh, procedural grass and some of the other dirt, um, because as we put the road through, um, we'll end up with this grass and um, other plants and things like that that we have in our procedural level sticking through the road. And of course, uh, I'm gonna to have to unpaint where some of the trees are gonna go, but we'll, uh, Take a look at that here. And I'm only gonna do this for a little distance, even though the road will probably be uh, much longer than that, but I don't wanna take up a lot of time on this. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. Let me go to my landscape. I'm gonna go back to my paint here. And I have this one material I put together for a path. Okay, and we talked about that in our other, um, when we created our blended material. And, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of raise the size of this up a little bit, tool strength up a little bit, and uh, get my brush bigger. And I'm going to just start painting um, right here at the edge and start painting this path material. Kind of where I think I'm going to have my road go. I may have to make some corrections a little bit later on and come back and repaint some of this. Okay. Kind of see what I'm doing is I'm removing that grass now. So where my road is going to go through here, that grass is now going to get removed. Okay. And 
and I think it's going to kind of go this here up that direction. And I'll have to come back in and fix some of this. And I'm going to have to also paint out some of those trees. And then my road is also going to go this direction. All right, and that'll get us started on the spline system. Once I show you how it works, um, obviously you can come in, you may have to go back and forth, paint in, fix, and kind of adjust the way that your path there is going to look so that uh, you know where your road's going to go. And then come back in and maybe even repaint your grass back in once you have that figured out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop that now. The next thing we're going to need to do is uh, we're going to need to create a surface that we're going to use for our road. Okay, we're going to have to create kind of a model. And I'm going to go up here to um, my selection and we're going to go to modeling. Okay, and when I click open the modeling, we're going to get a box. I'm going to just kind of come out over here somewhere in an empty spot. Okay. And this is a, a new system in Unreal Engine 5.1, I believe. I don't think I remember seeing it in 5.0. At least I didn't play with it any in 5.0. Um, and what this does is allows us to make some static meshes uh, here inside of Unreal Engine to use um, in our scene. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a surface that is going to be a model for us to use in our spline to create a road. Okay. So I'm going to select the box. And with the box... Um, you can see if I hover over here now, there's my box, okay? And what I want to do um, is first I'm going to go in and I'm going to put this uh, in a spot where I want to have my current folder set up, right? So I'm going to go into my content drawer and I don't want it to go into this. And you can see I was playing here and found out that I accidentally did that. So I'm going to go into my content. I'm going to put it into a folder that I created. If you don't already have one, you can right click, create a new folder and then call it models, okay? And I have one here that I already created as a, a road, as a demo for a road panel. Actually, I did this in, um, in Maya, but um, I'm gonna do this one here in uh, Unreal Engine to show you how this works. So we're gonna select this one, and um, instead of calling this one road panel, I'll call it something like just road, maybe. All right, so this is the current folder I want it to go in, my road folder. And now I'm gonna go back to my modeling screen. So we're gonna make some modifications here on the width, the depth. So first I'm gonna click it in the scene and just bring it in. So now I have it. It's these dimensions, 100 by 100 by 100. It's a cube, right, or a box. I'm gonna set it up so it's 1500 uh, in length or width in this case. For my depth, I'm going to uh, make this 750. And then for the height, I'm going to drop this down to five. So basically, it's just kind of a, a giant rectangle. Okay. And um, you can kind of see that my grass is sticking up through it just from where I have it laying here. And this is why we want to paint that stuff out. Um, so we have a nice path um, for our road to go on without that having to worry about grass and things like that on top of it. All right. So um, this is uh, all of the stuff we're going to have on it. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Hit accept, okay? And now it's gone in there's this box right here. That's the, num the name of it. So I'm gonna go into my folder and I'm going to right click on that and I'm gonna rename it. You can also use F2. And I'm just gonna call this SM underscore for static mesh. And I'm just gonna call this road, okay? And that's what I'm gonna use for the, uh, for the object, okay? So now um, with that created, let's go ahead and uh, jump into making a spline for the start of our road, okay? So first I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna delete that. We don't need it in the scene anymore because we now have a model of it here 
in our uh, folders, okay? And this is the model we're gonna use. And that's why we did that, so that we had a model, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go over here, um, and my road's kind of, this area's kind of messed up, it's a little high, but when I go to put this spline in, we can use it to help adjust our road height as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back up here to modeling, where we made this modeling model, and we're gonna select it, and we're gonna go to our landscape, okay? I'm gonna click on landscape, and with this open, we have Manage, Sculpt, and Paint. We're going to go to Manage, and we want this to be a spline. So we have the spline selected. If it's not selected, select Splines, okay? And then down here under Edit Layers, you probably only have one that says Layer. Remember, I already made a spline for this water, and that's what this water is right here, okay? So what I want to do is I'm going to right click on the one that says layer. You can also, if you have multiple splines, it doesn't really matter, but you right click in here under edit layers and we're going to create, okay? And now we have one called layer one. I'm gonna right click on that. I'm gonna rename this one. And I'm gonna call this my road. Now you may end up with multiple splines if you have different uh, multiple roads. Um, and so you can name them whatever system you're going to use with but since i'm just going to use this one as a demo so now that i have it um, i'm going to go ahead and right click on road and i'm going to say reserve for splines okay so we're only going to be putting splines on this and it's going to give me a caution and um i'm going to say yes because we don't have anything on it to worry about right now anyway okay and once it gets done here okay let me pause this for a second. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're good. All right, so now that we've got that set up, I don't know why it took so long. Um, what we're going to do is down here in the area where you want to start your road, we're going to hold the control button and we're going to left mouse click. Okay, and that's going to give you this kind of little mountain looking uh, symbol here. And um, you can see that right now I have one of my, my gizmos on it. Um, and that's kind of what you should look like, okay? All right, so that's the first one. And then I'm going to hold the control button, and I'm going to go down just a little ways, and I'm going to go ahead and hold the control and left mouse button click again. And we should get this kind of um, green-looking material across the top here. All right, so this is our first segment, okay? And what we want to do is now that we have it created, we're going to go ahead and add our model to it that we just created. And we're also going to add a material to it as well. All right. Um, so what we're going to do, and I want to point out a couple things here. Over here on the left hand side, we can uh, deform landscape to splines for all splines or only selected. All right. So right now, by default, it's deforming. We don't have to worry about that. There's also a couple other ones here that say control points and segments for select all. If I were to click on that, that would select every single segment uh, or control point I have in my scene for layers, okay? I don't want to do that. I only want to select the ones that I'm working with in this particular segment. So over here on the right hand side, um, we have um, select all connected. So that would basically be these segments with any ones that I'm working with here that are connected to the ones I currently have selected. So I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna select all connected segments, okay? And when I do that, it grabs this entire segment. We wanna make sure we do the segment because this is the one that's going to modify the model. If we put the model just on the control points, it's not going to uh, connect them all up nice and neat. It's going to kind of leave them uh, segmented, okay? They're, even though it's the control points, so they're basically broken apart from each other. We wanna make sure we have select all connected segments selected, okay? And then we're gonna go down to where it says landscape spline meshes. And right now I should say zero array elements. I'm gonna hit the plus symbol. And when I do that, it adds an index for one. So I have an index zero. If I hit the down arrow next to that, there's this one called mesh. And right now none is selected. So I'm gonna go back to my content drawer and make sure I have my road selected. And we can get it in there one of two ways. We can either um, hit the arrow here with it selected, or we can just click and drag and drop it in. And when we do that, you'll see that it kind of fills in basically the way it's shaped here. Um, it's almost like a square. That's how far apart I have that. Um, 
and when we go to add the material we'll see what we're working with and then um, we may have to make some modifications to the way some of this is scaled in here okay um, let's take a look at the material first so once we do that okay we have our mesh in underneath it we have material overrides and right now again it's zero rate elements so we're gonna hit the plus symbol and we're gonna add a material in here so I went to bridge earlier and I found some um, different materials that I wanted from Megascans surfaces and I found a uh, damaged um, where is it go? destroyed here we go destroyed American Road which is what that is right there so I'm going to select that and I have several um, of the material instances that I've made um, because I've been using them for other scenes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, one of these and this is the original instance right here and I'm going to duplicate it okay so I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to rename this one at the very end I'm just going to call it Aspen because that's the scene that this is road is currently in um, and I'm going to just do that and I'm going to select it and I'm going to drop it in over here and when we do that we can see that my model is kind of sideways and that's probably why it's been squared out on me like this okay uh, I want the road to run this direction as my segments are supposed to go so what we need to do is we need to change the way our axis is right now um, our forward axis is set to X and we probably want to put it to Y and when we do that it's going to make some modifications here right and the next thing I want to do is um, let's see here we right now it says scaled to width let's uncheck that for a second and see what that does for us okay when I do that it changes the scale of my road okay and I'm also can see that I'm gonna have to modify my material but this is a little bit more like the rectangle of what I had okay now it's not quite the width that I want it to be it needs to be a little bit wider so I'm going to adjust my since we have Y forward this would be my X so my first one I'm gonna adjust this just a little bit until I get the look I want okay and that's close but I think I might need to go 1.25 maybe all right so it gets me started I think I'm in the ballpark for the width of my road here okay um, you can always bring a model in like I did with these trucks um, to make sure that the scale of the road is about right okay and it's close I'm gonna go ahead and fix my material instance now so right here I'm going to open my content drawer this was the one I changed to Aspen I'm going to double click it and open it up and my tiling is set to one and one so what I want to do is I want to maybe make this let's see here what's two do for us on this okay yeah so two gets me just about there it looks like okay so by adjusting my material kind of gets me where I want it I think it's close now what I can do is I can grab this front one right here if I hit W on it I can drag this a little bit further forward so it meets up with my bridge in this case you may not be using a bridge like I am here or something like that but we can kind of get a feel for how our lines are lining up here um, and if I raise this up a little bit yeah I'm gonna have to uh, obviously come back and I'm gonna have to modify the surface area but I can tell that my lines aren't quite right here so go back to my segments here I'm gonna go ahead and I want to remember select all connected segments okay and we'll come back and we'll I'll come back and modify that a little bit more in a minute and I'll kind of show you the results but now that we've got it started okay I'm going to go ahead and click on this one at the end moving in the direction I want my road to go okay and with that one selected I'm going to go again and I'm going to hold the control okay and I'm going to start kind of moving it around in the direction I want it to go and I'm going to obviously have to modify my terrain a little bit 
um, to help get all this fixed. And um, I'm thinking, all right, so select all. I want to make sure that um, I deform the land to only selected. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select my segments here and I'm going to go only selected and make sure that uh, that's turned on. So I'm deforming the, the land as I move along. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and go back to my control point. And you can put in as many or as few of these control points as you need, but um, what these control points will do for us is they'll allow us to come back and modify at these individual points. So the more you have, it'll allow you to kind of adjust your terrain, right? And I know I'm going to have to go through here. And yeah, I'm going to have to clean up my trees. But as I move along, my road's kind of filling in here. I'm going to have to come back. And this is what I'm talking about. So you can see here um, that I would have to come back and kind of repaint in my path because I haven't done that here. But I've got grass growing up through it. Now it's kind of a, a kind of a cool look if you're trying to make a you know a post-apocalyptic dystopian type world. Uh, maybe you do want segments of road missing and growth of trees and things like that and grass through it. And that's one way of doing it. Um, and you can see I have trees growing up here, so it's kind of that's kind of interesting. All right, so that's kind of the general start. And then um, in areas like this where we have um, our terrain kind of uh, growing up and meeting and coming through our grounds, one thing we could do is since we're in the landscape mode already, if I go to sculpt, I can go to flatten and I can then select my layer that my landscape is on, which is this one here. And I can come back in and find some segments and it's unfortunately going upwards instead of downwards. So maybe start down here. Kind of start to push the ground down. And of course we may need to come in and adjust the model some. We may need to fix some things. But we can start pushing our ground down and around um, in areas where the road isn't working quite right. Um, let's go ahead and um, if I go back to manage splines I can select a spline or two and I can kind of pull the road a little bit and start to reshape things and I can also come back in and adjust my terrain around all of that all right so um, that gets me started um, and I think that will get you started as well. So that's um, really kind of how we can do the things with the road. So the next thing I want to do is uh, show you a different way of using splines. And in this case, um, maybe putting in some fencing, right? And um, looks like my water needs some adjustment again, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, so let's go ahead and make another spline. And this time we're going to get a model that's already been pre-made and um, import it in. All right, so I've already picked out um, an environment that, and I'm doing this because I want to kind of show you how you can uh, transfer things from other projects into this project. Now, the caveat is that is that that project that you have has to be the same version that you're using, okay? So since we're using 5.1, your project has to be in 5.1, okay? Um, and you can take some of your older projects and you can update them to 5.1 uh, like we've done in the past simply by having 5.1 opened up and then open that project up and it'll convert it to 5.1 for you and then you can transfer anything out of it like I'm about to show you into your current project. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click this create project. So this was the city environment collection which is in, is in the marketplace, it is a free asset I've shown it to you before when we were talking about trees. Um, and this one is, an, is a project in itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and create this project. 
And it's going to ask me what version I want to do it in. This one comes in several different versions. We're doing this in 5.1. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it into this folder right here. That's fine. Nope, I don't want to go into OneDrive, actually. So let's put that somewhere else. Okay. And it doesn't like that particular... Oh, I think I know why. Do I already have a city project one in here? I do already. Okay. So I already have this uh, in here as one. So I'm going to select this folder, but I'm going to give it a different name. I'll just call it city park environment. That cleared up that error I had down there. I'm going to go ahead and create it. I'm going to pause while this gets created. Okay. So now we got to go find it, and it was under City Park Environment. That's the old one. There it is right here. So here's the City Park Environment. If I double-click and open it up, and while well, that's opening, I'll go back and save this. Okay. And I'm going to pause because it's also going to have to build shaders and things like that. So I'm going to pause this video for now. And then once it's up and running completely, um, I'll come back in and we'll get the uh, model that we want or models out of the uh, city park environment. I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll use them as a spline to make a kind of a fence. All right. Okay, so it has um, opened up. And you can see it's pretty massive sized uh, terrain map. What I am interested in are some of the fences, okay? And those are kind of uh, throughout the various sections of this uh, world. And if I bump this up to a faster speed, we might get there a little bit quicker. So like um, here, there's some uh, different types of concrete fences depending on what the uh, scene that you're looking for to make and I'm really bogging my computer down everything I have going on right now um, you can also see that there are some uh, different style fences throughout the rest of the world here and I thought this was going to be okay but clearly I have Too many things happening all at once here. So there's different style fences, all right? So let's go find those in the... Um, go ahead and select one of them here, hopefully. Go to Outliner. Actually, okay, so there are some fences. Static mesh, park fence. I'm going to go to the folder where that's located. All right, so after a little bit of digging around... Um, because I didn't want the merged ones because those are all ones that have been connected together. And if you take a look in the scene here, you can see that they're all kind of highlighted together. It means that they're all, meaning they're all connected. So we'd want to, if we transferred those, we wouldn't necessarily be able to work with them individually like we want to. So if we go to the content drawer and under city park meshes props, we find that there's a bunch of different individual props uh, and there are fences in here of different types. And this is what we want, is we want to find a, a fence like this right here. And there's a bunch of other um, other assets, okay? And some of these might be some things you want, um, maybe to use in a scene. Um, there's some roadblocks, things like that, some statues. So um, stoplights, traffic lights, and things like that. So um, if that is something that you're interested in, one easy way to do this and is to just uh, transfer the entire folder um, and there's also one called road signs in here, which might be something if you're doing kind of a higher detailed downtown area or something, maybe you want those as well. So I'm going to jump up to the meshes and the one that's called props. Okay. And now you can do this with individual items as well, right? So if I right click and I uh, right click on an item, I can go ahead and go to asset actions and I can migrate. Okay. So it's the same thing for individuals or for um, large scale ones if you wanted to do everything, all right? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this entire folder along with the road signs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to my meshes 
and I'm gonna click on the props folder. I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna to go to where it says migrate, okay? I'm gonna say migrate and it's gonna give me options and everything that's in that folder should be listed here, okay? And you can see there's lots of them. If there are things in here that you do not want, you can always go in and you can uncheck them. But for these, I'm just gonna go ahead and check them all. I'm gonna say okay. And then it's gonna pop up with a folder wanting to know where do I want to put these. And I'm actually gonna put this into my current project. Okay, so onto my E drive. Okay, sorry, my M drive wrong computer so into my m drive into my unreal engine projects and this is my landscape project 5.1 i'm going to select my content folder okay so the process is find where you want to put it in your project and it's going to go into the content folder of your project so just select that folder and we're going to select folder and it's going to do this migration and it'll tell you how long it's going to take i guess not really tell you, but show you how long it's taking, how many props you're moving. All right, so now I've migrated uh, things from this project into my project. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way and let's take a look. So I'm gonna go to my content drawer, go to my content folder and this was called, that's always the fun part, is trying to figure out where it went. You have a lot of different folders, and here it is right here, so City Park. So I created a, part, a folder called City Park, and then it moved over things like materials, meshes, and textures, because those models that we had, that we picked from this right here, the fences and stuff, they came with uh, meshes, so the actual model itself, and then they also came with textures, okay? and materials so the textures were used to make materials so if we click on this and double click on that you'll see all these different individual textures and they go into our materials so they make these different materials for all of the different things we need to use and those go on to our meshes and in this case we only took the props folder for myself whatever it was you took. So if you took an individual model, you would get the mesh, the material, and they would be put into folders uh, appropriately for where they went. And I also took the road sign ones too, okay? And it looks like it's still updating, so that's fine. All right, so now that we've got um, everything kind of in here, we're gonna go through the process of uh, using one of these fences to make a fence um, in our world using splines, okay? I'm going to use all right so I'm going to close this one right here we don't need it open it's just going to bog my computer down so I'm going to use this one right here okay this is kind of a kind of just a little wire fence um, and I'm going to use it kind of to block off some areas in my scene um, now if you're making a country scene maybe you want to find a um, like a wooden fence a split split rail fence or something like that whatever is appropriate for your scene but just to show this demo uh, on how to do this um, I went to uh, <laughs> went to this collection hopefully to find a little bit more and that's kind of what I got uh, there are some other fences that might be more attractive to use like here's a chain link type fence um, and you know what? I think I'll use this chain link fence just to kind of demonstrate with the chain link fence. Okay, so um, I'm going to find a spot where I want to put my splines in. And um, maybe I just kind of want to create an area that's blocked off along the side of the road here, okay? So kind of like blocked off. Maybe there's be like a parking area or something like that to get down to the water. I don't know. All right, so let's go ahead and do that, okay? So we're gonna go back in to my spline section. So under landscape mode, manage, with my spline selected, I'm gonna go ahead and right click again. I'm gonna create, okay? And it's gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna go ahead and rename it. I'm just gonna call this fence, okay? And I'm also going to um, 
right click on it and we're going to reserve this for splines okay i'm going to say yes okay because right now i don't have anything in there anyhow and i'm going to pick a spot i'm going to unselect these i don't want to have these selected so i'm just going to click and unselect everything and now i'm going to hold the control button and i'm going to click with my left mouse button and create a new spline point okay and then i'm going to just kind of go across here create one just like we did last time and let's make sure we get the model set up so it looks the way we want it to have it look before we get too far down the road so now with this one selected i'm going to go up here and again select all connected segments i'm going to scroll down until i find my landscape spline meshes i'm going to hit that plus symbol again just like we did last time hit the down arrow on the index and I'm going to go into my content drawer and find that fence I wanted to use. Okay. We put it in there. It is going to be really crazy. Okay. And the reason is, is because right now it is adjusting scale to width. So we're going to uncheck scale to width and it's going to drop it down to the right size. Okay. And if I were to hit play right now with my character, just to verify that. Okay. Okay. You can see that it's going to be kind of across there. Now I'm having some issues with this particular section of my map. Um, it's wanting to grow over the road. I'm going to have to fight with that to figure out why. But um, so this may not, uh, you know, and this fence is kind of underground and it's not really sticking really well right there. So we may have to make some um, modifications to it a little bit too. But let's go ahead and get our splines finished first, and then we'll come back and take a look at that. Okay, I'm going to hit escape. And now that I know that the fence is looking right, it's about the right scale for my character, I'm going to go ahead and select that control point again. I'm going to hold control, and I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of draw my fence out here a little ways. Okay, something like that. All right. And the spines will automatically draw it in for you to the right scale. And it will adjust your terrain somewhat, um, but you may need to come in and make some adjustments to your terrain and also to the model itself. So I want this one to be a little bit flatter right here. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to select that control point. I'm going to hit W. I'm going to push it down a little bit, just see what it does for me. And this one's going to be fighting with the position of the road as well as the position of my... Um, fence. So this may not be the best example of how to fix this, but I'm going to pull it back up and I'm going to grab this one. See what we get there. And the ground kind of tries to move up, but again, it's trying to also compensate for multiple of these. But once I get that kind of where the way I want it, again, we can always go to sculpt and we can kind of try to play around with our level. We have to make sure we're on our landscape level and then kind of play around with this a little bit and because i have so much happening here it may not play nice the way i want it to and this would probably work a lot better on a flatter surface for this type of fence and if i hold the shift button and push down let's see what it does here it's not going to do anything yeah, and this is because I can't push this spot down because right now it's fighting with me over this position of the road, too. So, let's see here. Oops. Let's see here. Oh. All right, so this one of the considerations, I mean, I guess it's good when things don't go straight or easily when I'm trying to do these demonstrations. So you can kind of see some of the challenges you might have to fight with and some of the considerations you may have to make. Um, and starting the fence right at this point next to the road may not have been the best choice. So what I could do is I can go back to manage my splines, go back to my fence, select that one right there. If I delete it, It'll take that one out and push it back a little ways. And then I can kind of play around with some of this a little bit further down. Yeah. 
Now we can kind of play around with it. Oops, wrong button. And the tool is so strong. <laughs> Push it down just a little bit. This makes a little bit more sense here. Maybe smooth it some now. Oh, it's just going to put it right back up. Made a big divot right there. All right, you can see that as you start to modify other areas, things start to kind of smooth out a little bit, it makes a little bit more sense. Fix that divot. Okay. And that's how you can use splines to create both the road and a fence. And then, of course, you're going to have to come back in and do a little bit of uh, adjustment to get everything to kind of work the way you want it to. Do some smoothing out. Um, you may run into some spots that it just doesn't want to work for you. So you're going to have to um, kind of play around with that. And that would be probably... Okay, so let me see here. I want to use, I don't really want to deform that there anymore. So um, with that one selected, we can raise or lower um, our deformation. So let's try not raising it. And maybe this one as well. And again, just have to try multiple things until you get to find the right connection. And I'm not sure why this is fighting me so bad. Because clearly it's working elsewhere. And... One other thing I could try is going back into my splines, selecting these particular splines, and going from the end here. It's not the best choice, but sometimes we just need to start fresh, delete them out, okay. And let's see here, oh wow. It's working so hard to try to get that to work that has modified my terrain really bad. And that's kind of a bad thing. Not really a bad thing. That's just kind of a bad thing. So I'm going to want it to be level like with this here. Okay, let's move this area out a little bit. All right, so um, I think now we can go back and go back into manage. I'm going to select this one here. And we can hold control and now try to probably did not need that many there. But we'll see. OK, 
Okay. <clears throat> And again, we'll have to adjust everything to get it to fit correctly. We can rotate these a little bit, but as we rotate them, we also are going to create some other issues further down. So we got to be careful. All right, we can start cleaning up that away. Okay, so um, I'm just a little bit of an addition to the video. After I got done, uh, this error popped up and it reminded me that I had forgotten to talk about a couple possible things that might come up. Um, so once you get your spline in there, you will, um, if you have to do a restart from one map or another, you may see this landscape spline actor, actor and it'll be whatever number it is. Um, Reference non-spatial, non-spatially loaded actor landscapes, okay? So this is a caution. It's not an error, but it's a caution. And one of the things we can do is uh, basically what's happening, I mean, is that uh, your landscape itself is not spatially loaded, okay? But it's trying to non-spatially load your um, spline that we just put on it. Okay, so let's take a look at what that, that means. So if I select landscape here, okay, and then type in, in the search section, okay, so if we type in spatially, so um, our new landscape actor is spatially loaded, it actually uh, checks that box. So anytime we add something in there, so, um, and I'm not gonna uncheck that because we may it in the future, but, uh, right now we can see that the landscape itself is not spatially loaded but if we take a look at the splines that are underneath it so if I hit the down arrow our spline actors that we just put in so like our uh, fence and our road are going to be selected here all right and the first one I did which is the road that I demonstrated in this scene out here I've already unchecked is spatially loaded but that fence that I put in here as a demo is not okay it is it is being spatially loaded so we need to uncheck that okay and then we can save it and that error will stop showing up now if I go to the scene that we had just set up we were just working on the Aspen scene we can see that when it pops in that these actors have the same error in them. Okay. And again, that is going to be underneath your landscape. Okay. Not spatially loaded, but both the spline actors, which pop in both here. So let me just pop that one's the river. There we go. This is the road we just did. And then this would be the fence that we just did, which is right over there. Okay. So they're both going to come in that way. All right. And then one other thing that might happen is the first time you hit play after you've made a new spline actor. Okay. The object will be here okay so and I was kind of playing around with this terrain I really messed it up so um, wow really messed that up have to come back and fix that anyway so what may happen is once you uh, get that in there um, and then you hit escape this spline may completely disappear and the way to get that back in is to save everything okay now mine did not disappear it's still here and then um, go and open a different level. 
not that. So if you open another level, open that level up, and then come back to this level, your spline actor will uh, reappear, and it'll be back in your world again, okay? All right, so um, I think that uh, this is a good place probably to stop what we're doing. Um, this is uh, basically how you can kind of get uh, use the splines to make it a little bit easier to get uh, long models in, kind of make it so that they um, combine together and really kind of um, give uh, more detail to your terrain area as uh, you start to put together your landscape for a game or whatever it is you might be uh, trying to use it for. Again, if you have any questions, you can uh, certainly put those down in the comments down at the section. If you uh, like this tutorial, please um, like it and uh, subscribe to my channel. And um, I will get back to you with any questions you might have. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.